Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how you can control layers or any other parameters in Camelot Pro just using an external controller. In this case, we are going to mute and unmute, for example, layers using keys from an external controller. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to go to settings. Okay, and um, I have connected actually a an Akai Professional uh, 25 key on um, Bluetooth. And um, so the first thing I want to actually do is go to MIDI and uh, what it says, uh, uh, Bluetooth MIDI. And I have just turned on um, the Akai LPK25 and I click on connect and uh, it should say connected now. So it will give you this message, which of course you can also uh, decide to not show again, but click OK. All right, so we have uh, an external controller connected to Commonwealth Pro. In this case, it's a, a Bluetooth external controller, but it doesn't have to be. It could be just a normal wired one, like a Korg Nano Key 2 or anything else. Now, let's go to remote control. Let's go to MIDI. Now, you see from by N2, N2 says to another Camelot. We are not going to control another Camelot instance, but we want to um, configure an external MIDI controller to control Camelot remotely. So we click on the first option. Now, you have two configuration here, which are both read only, so therefore you cannot um, change. You have, of course, option here to edit, duplicate, and uh, export. So my recommendation is that you click on the plus sign. Here you can create a custom one, or can, you can import one. Click on create custom. You will see that it will say new input controller there. Click on the three dots. Now you can rename it, edit it, duplicate it, export it, or remove it completely. Let's select edit. Now we go up here and we can decide to give it, for example, a different name. So we can say new Akai here, simply like that, where it says controller MIDI port, click on it. And uh, here it should show your uh, um, devices, which are connected. If they're not, go back to MIDI, go to Bluetooth MIDI. You see they are connected. Go to MIDI input and select that Akai there so it will make that visible. Go back to remote control, MIDI, from by, where it says new Akai. Again, click on the free dot and click edit. So go back to the MIDI port and now you see Akai LPK25. The reason that you see the keyboard underneath is because it's asking you to search and that is useful when you have a lot of different devices. So let's select the Akai LPK25 and then let's remove the keyboard. Now, underneath, you find a lot of different options that you can map against your external controller. And, of course, you can map uh, keys from your external controller, um, buttons, faders, whatever you like. Now, let's scroll down and let's go and find uh, uh, where it says uh, uh, layer. So, you can see here, we have a lot of selections. So, we go to scene, layer, one, mute. Let's click on that, and then it will say choose type channel unassigned. Click on learn, and now let's click a key, for example, AC. So I pressed the AC um, for key on the external controller, and it has learned that um, um, the uh, controller will send the note on message here on channel number one, and the note will be C4. Perfect. Let's go back. Now let's repeat the same procedure for scene layer to mute here. Click learn and let's press on D4. There you are. D4, channel one, note on. Okay, perfect. Let's go back, go back again. And let's ensure that this uh, um, remote control configuration is actually selected. Perfect. Let's go back to song. Now let's create a new song. Click on the plus sign. Let's say from scratch and let's call it uh, song one as a simple example, click on proceed. Now we have one scene, doesn't matter for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just keep it simple. So we go to layers and, and under scene layers on that new scene, we're going to click on the plus sign. We select from scratch to add the layer and let's call these layer number one and let's click proceed. 
Next, we're going to um, click on the plus sign here again from scratch, and we're going to create another layer, a second layer, like so. Click Proceed. Now, if everything is OK, if you press on the C4 on the external MIDI controller, you can see I have muted the first layer. If you press C4 again, I unmute that. If I press D4, I unmute the second layer. If I press again D4, I unmute that layer as well. So let's go back to settings and have another view under MIDI and that configuration that we have created for the Akai controller, which again, it could be any other external controller. So you can see you have a lot of different options. You can select a set list, a song, um, a song with a program change. You can save, go to the previous scene, the next scene, the previous song, the next song. You can call for panic if you have no stack. You can go to the previous and next view. You can scroll, next page, preview previous page you can advance reverse tap the tempo start and stop the midi clock which might be really good in terms of live performance the same on continue and play pause and stop and you can go to different timeline events as well and remember you have a timeline here we have seen that in a previous tutorial and therefore you can create a different event on the timeline and then um, use keys or faders or buttons in your external controller to move to that event then you can go to the different layers, you can mute back in tracks, you can mute and change the level of each layer. So you could have two um, buttons or two uh, sliders on your controller or faders, and you can change the level, uh, the volume level of um, one layer, for example. So that becomes really useful in terms of actually mixing in real time. And as you can see, it gives you a lot of selection in terms of layer uh, up to 16. Then sock rack, and you can change the level and also muting them as well, which is uh, very, very handy. The set list track, again, change the volume and uh, the muting option as well. And so on. So as you can see, I'm um, not going to go through them all, but you have so many different options here that you can use to actually um, control remotely what Camelot Pro is actually doing um, in, in terms of uh, uh, the performance that you're playing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. And as always, see you next time. Bye.